Amanda here from createyourfuture.co. So today I'm so excited. I have a personal success story that I am going to share with you guys. Now, honestly, I wasn't going to share this success story because Andrew does watch the channel. So Andrew, if you're watching this video, just plug your ears, turn it off, whatever. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't even matter if you watch it because you're a part of this, you know. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, yeah, it's a, a success story about how we are talking about marriage and looking at wedding rings and how I've accomplished that. So if you guys have been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know like in the videos, like in about two years ago or so, maybe three years now, there was a lot of examples that I used with Andrew. And um, yeah, so yeah, I'm really excited to share my success with you guys. Just before I do, if you would like to ask me a question, definitely check out the link down below. You sign up at the Patreon and I do answer those questions every single month on the YouTube Live, as well as we are having a contest. When we hit 100,000 subscribers, we are giving away three free coaching sessions with the coach of your choice. All you need to do to enter is to share our our videos on your social media platform, subscribe, subscribe, of course, and then also comment what you've actually manifested using the law of attraction, watching our channel. Let's share some hope, okay? Because no matter how big or how small, I mean, someone out there may be struggling just to get a text message and your success story after no contact after two years will be the most inspiring thing to them. So let's share and inspire each other. Now, one thing I would like to address is yes, we do delete negative comments on this channel. We are a positive community. And if somebody is going to be negative, we are going to delete it. We're not going to let people repeat the old story. We, we, create with our thoughts, okay? So when people post a story or a comment about how bad things are going for them and you read it, you're now, you know, creating that in your reality or possibly creating that in your reality. Only focus on what's good and only focus on what's good with other people, okay? So yeah, we do um, delete comments where people are repeating their old story. We also sometimes delete questions because sometimes people go on and decide to shame people for their question or why they want to manifest something, okay? Also, as well as we don't moderate the comments, like the, the questions, so we don't know what answers are being given. While most of you guys do give great advice, we have seen some comments and advice that isn't quite so great, and so we don't moderate it, so we do delete questions as well. There are plenty of law of attraction forums out there where you can interact and ask questions. Um, you can intend to find them and they will pop up. If you would like to share success stories, we do have our Facebook page where um, our group where we talk only about success stories and as well as we post success stories in here. So just wanted to address that. It's only because it is a positive community. We don't want anyone shamed or to feel bad for what they want to create, whether someone else agrees with it or not. And also we don't actually um, moderate all of the answers that are written there. So yeah, we are going to delete those comments. Okay. And we don't hide it. We do not hide it. <laughs> so let's dive into my success story, guys. It's amazing. So as you guys know, um, I'm with Andrew. And one thing that I've been intending is getting married. Now, me and Andrew have been together now, I think over four years, actually. So now, one thing he did tell me when we first got together was he never wanted to get married again. He has been previously married, and he said he didn't want to get married again. And I said, okay. I said, okay. And I thought to myself, yeah, right, you're going to change your mind. Once you're with me, you're going to change your mind. So I started intending that he worships the ground I walk on. And the other thing is I did is I didn't actually um, make him not wanting to get married mean that there was something wrong with me. I basically held the story about him that, you know what, he was previously married and he didn't want to do it again. And that's a story that I needed to shift. So what I started to do, so the, the great manifestation that I had was we were looking at rings together and talking about the rings that we wanted to get for a wedding. We were talking about getting married. He calls me his wife. And if anyone is familiar in Canada, we have something called common law. So once you live with someone for over two years, you know, the basically the government sees you as married already, right? So all of these intentions, um, you know, um, and that I put out there had basically got Andrew to reflect back, mentioning that he was thinking about, you know, us getting married and us looking at rings and him calling me his wife. And he actually gets upset if I don't call him his hu my husband. If I call him my boyfriend, he says, that sounds so temporary. I'm your husband. <laughs> so, so guys, you know, 
the biggest thing here, right, is to start creating and start intending what you want to show up in your reality and not make anything mean rejection. Where a lot of the times where we fail in manifesting a specific person is, is they're a specific person. So you have to specifically change the story about them. Okay. And avoid making it mean that you're not good enough, whatever the case is. Okay. Now, there are times where you do need to work on your self-concept, okay? And those moments are going to show up in, in the times where you say, well, you know what, I'd like to get married sometime. And then the other person says, no, you're I don't want to get married. And then in that moment, you've got a couple choices. You can think, oh, no, he's going to change his mind. He's going to want to marry me. Or you can think, oh, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't he want to marry me? Okay, so the second one is now going to cause you another block that you're not good enough because now you're questioning why he doesn't want to marry you. Okay, whereas the other way, you're saying, no, he does want to, but he's just not ready yet. And he is going to be ready in no time. Okay, so what you always want to do is to change the story about the other person. Okay, because chances are you've put a block on them. Okay, I mean, they, you know, normally they don't go up and say, Well, I don't want to marry you because you're just no good, right? They've got their own stuff that you've created them with, right? So, how do you know what you've created them with? Well, you can ask, Well, do you ever want to get married? And then they'll tell you. And usually we create people with baggage, just like I created Andrew with baggage, right? Like I said, previous marriage it failed. He's never going to want to do it again. And then it was like, wow, that's crazy. So I started saying, no, you know what? Andrew is a very emotionally intelligent man. He's over his baggage. He gets that it didn't work with his first wife. I'm not her. I'm amazing. And he wants to marry me. Okay. So do you see the difference in the stories? You want to change the story about the other person. Okay. And then you also want to take a look and you want to change your story about you. Okay. Are you good enough to be married? Yes, absolutely. And then go through the reasons why the person wants to be with you because they're you pushed out. So if you think this is why they want to be with me, they're automatically going to think it and then they're going to start reflecting that back to you. Okay. Now the third area you want to check is your beliefs about relationships in general. Okay. So if you've been running around your whole life saying, I'm probably never going to get married, you're going to need to start changing that to, I am going to get married. I deserve to get married. My wedding is going to be amazing. And then you also want to start focusing on your wedding, right? So like, for instance, one of my intentions was obviously we were going to look at rings together. And then it just so happened that we were walking through the mall and Andrew pulls me into the, into, well, actually I went somewhere and then he went into the jewelry store and I found him in the jewelry store store looking at rings and stuff. And I was like, oh, and then one thing led to another. And I was like, oh, I pointed out this one carat solitaire. I'd like that for, you know, an engagement ring. And he was like, oh, do you? And then the woman with the, the sales lady was like, well, that one's bigger. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that one, right? I'm like, Andrew, look, that one, right? And then it was so funny because I saw a man's band there and I was like, and I loved it. It was like, it's so adorable. I would have totally bought it. Good thing I didn't because he was like, I showed it to Andrew and he was like, oh no, I, I don't like that at all. And I was like, phew, I'm like, cause I totally would have picked that out for him. Right. And then he went and showed me the rings that he likes. And so we both now know what rings we like and want to actually have. So, you know, I mean, I guess really what I'm getting at here is like, I've done so many intentions that all of this felt natural. You know, we've been together for so long. We've been living together for so long. He's been calling me his wife for so long, you know, and saying things like, well, we're pretty much married. We live together. And, you know, bring, he and bringing up the conversation where it wasn't a surprise that we were looking at wedding rings. And it's most definitely not going to be surprised when we get married because we are. So the thing that will be the surprise is the proposal, but I already know what I'm going to, I'm intending for that, right? So, my point is, right, is you know you're there when it feels comfortable and things start flowing comfortably, right? And then, of course, you know, the funny thing is, is once that happens, you know, you get your manifestation, you're like, oh, now do I want them, right? <laughs> So, so guys, you know what? It's entirely possible. The one thing that I want to stress is that relationships, they happen in stages. You can create the stages to happen as quick or as slow as you want. Okay. We always go through dating and then we date, you know, we get engaged or we move in together, da, 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 whatever order you want to do it in. So yeah, you know what? It has been four years, maybe just over, you know, for me to get to this point, but I wasn't, ready until recently. See, it's all about you being ready and about you energetically feeling good about it. If you would have said, oh, you know, is Andrew going to propose to you two years ago? I would have got so much anxiety in my stomach because I wasn't ready. I wasn't there yet. 
okay? And if I was intending and hoping that he was going to say he loved me and propose to me the next day, it was never going to happen because I was holding the anxiety because I wasn't ready for it yet, okay? So, you know, when you're manifesting and you're in a relationship and you're going through all the stages, it's for you to get comfortable. It's for you to be like, yeah, this is happening because you'll get married when you feel comfortable and you feel like it's going to happen, not the other person. They're going to feel and reflect back what you feel because there you pushed out. This is your quantum bubble. This is your reality. Okay. So it wasn't until recently that I actually started feeling comfortable about getting married. And as soon as I was comfortable with it and I was like, oh yeah, it's going to happen. That's when the ball started rolling and these things started coming in. So the feeling of anxiety is going to block you. Okay. And this applies to any stage in your relationship. If you're feeling anxiety before you reach out to somebody, chances are you're not going to get the response you want back because you're not feeling good about it. How do you change how you feel? You changed your thoughts. Your thoughts create your emotions. Okay. Have you ever had, and here's an example, have you ever sat down, right, and you haven't even gone anywhere yet, but you want to go to like a restaurant and you're like really excited about it. And then you're like, oh, but you know what, they're going to be so busy and we're not going to get a table and they're probably going to screw up our order. Like just thinking it and it hasn't even happened yet. You start to get upset and angry, right? Yes, your thoughts create your emotions. Okay, so how do you change what you're feeling as you start changing your thoughts? And I mean, a lot of times if you can't figure out what you're thinking, you start saying what you actually desire. Okay, now, you'll know if you're thinking about you know the person you want to date and you're feeling anxiety well then you know that there's something in that area and you would start to work on intentions in that area I would write down all the reasons why I'm feeling anxious and say that's okay and then turn around and create all the opposite intentions and um, you know the other thing the other huge thing right is keep making those little lists of everyone as you pushed out right so Keep going through and creating little tiny things in your reality that show you that you are the God of your reality. Because once you do this, you will see that magic and that will help you to get to the next stage, the next stage, the next stage, right? So that little list of manifestations, um, they've just got to be small ones because you want to encourage yourself, not disappoint yourself. So like, for instance, let's say that I'm going to manifest something like that I feel is really huge. I'll manifest something really tiny first that I'll know that I've created. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, completely awesome guys. So yes, that's my success story. So yeah, so I think it's a great success. I mean, it's not the full born proposal yet, but I mean, we're talking about marriage. He's calling me his wife. We're looking at rings. I mean, he needed to know which ring I wanted before he proposed to me. So, you know, and he was the one that went into the jewelry store first. So it just goes to show that your thoughts will reflect back. So I really hope that this video inspires you guys to keep going and to really look inside of the story that you're holding about yourself, you're holding about relationships, and you're holding about the other person because, you know, it's it's all those stories combined, right? So, you know, if maybe your block isn't self-concept, right? Maybe your block is the story you hold about the other person. You know, one thing I do want to put out there is I personally have never been big on doing self-concept, like self-concept affirmations. I mean, I've always had the attitude that I can be, do, and have whatever I want and that I'm good enough, right? So, me doing, you know, self, you know, um, concept really wasn't my block. My block was, you know, creating a story that, you know, Andrew had baggage. That was my block. So everybody's block may be a little bit different. If you have anxiety and you have insecurities, then self-concept is going to be a block of yours. Okay. I mean, if you don't, and you've been generally just this regular old person that, you know, thinks pretty highly of themselves, you know, then, you know, you're probably created a story with them, but you know what, if you would like help to find out where your blocks are we do have an amazing team of coaches that are trained to help find your blocks when you tell them their story your story they're going to help you find your blocks and recreate and revise that story to something that works for you right one other thing that I actually want to put out there is, you know, even before law of attraction, um, I've always had boyfriends, even when I've hated myself, I've always had a boyfriend. So because I've always held that story. So, you know, to think that, you know, you've got to, you know, change something about you to have something isn't necessarily something you need to do. You can say, look at I'm just fine the way I am right now, whether I like myself or not, and everybody is attracted to me. I mean, you create your reality, so you create the story, but you have to go back and recreate any story that you've already created in order to, you know, manifest a specific person or to, 
you know, get that movement in your reality. Okay. Meaning, you know, my story about baggage with Andrew, I can guarantee, you know, 80% of the time, even probably more, you know, that's what we hear is it's always a story about baggage with the other person. Okay. So guys, take a look at that. And, um, yeah, and I uh, hope this video helps you guys. And, and thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.